Goldsmiths, breeding ground for the contemporary art stars of the future. Students here hope they might make a career in this most precarious of professions. I'd like to propose a toast to this year's master's students. In three days, these graduates will be out on their own. But for now, they're soaking up the attention, desperate to be noticed by some of the 2,000 curators, critics and collectors who have come to see their final show. Very strange. <laughs> Very strange to see all the people walking around and not really sure where to stand. <laughs> It's so obvious that I am the artist at the moment because I'm standing here and it's just a bit strange. I mean, it's very exposing. You can't avoid by looking at people's faces and finding, try to find some sort of signal that they like it or not or what they're thinking about. The goal, selling your work and finding a gallery willing to take you on. Everybody is shitting themselves. Because it is a big deal, like, you know, it's a, it, it can be a make or break career, like, event. Um, you know, lots of people after the show give up making work for 10 years because nobody liked their work. Roisin likes to steal. Her degree piece is a rhododendron lifted from a work by Turner Prize winner Simon Starling. Completing the piece, his reaction to this art heist. Yeah, but I, I assume that we'll be coming to his and do as in he's indicating. For many here, there's a short window. Two years of, of studying does kind of come down to what people think of the work that you're showing tonight. Collectors and and and, and uh, curators and the rest of them, like you, you really hope that they come in, they look, and they see something interesting, or they see some potential, and um, that some opportunities come out of it. That's it, the end of Goldsmiths. Time to make the transition from student to professional artist. When you've just graduated from a course, there is a certain glow about you, you know, that you're, you're fresh and that people are quite interested in knowing what is, who are the fresh emerging artists. And so I won't be able to play off of that come next year because there'll be a bunch of, you know, a few thousand more new graduates out there. Blue sold his degree piece to a city collector for 1,300 quid. And Roisin, she got the prize for the best degree show work. It's a very hard time to actually leave college, just generally anyway. And in the current climate, the financial climate, there's probably less money floating around than there has been. A lot of them have now left with probably being rather in debt. You've got to have somewhere to live. You've got to have a job, you've got to find a job that you like doing that, importantly, that then pays enough for you to have time to do something else. So preferably a part-time job is the best thing to have. However, it's got to pay enough that you can survive and have time in the studio. So that's hard. Very few artists do make a living from, from art. What has your route been? 
oh, I'm a failure. So I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to be an artist, and I started teaching so I could live and continue to make the art that I was making, which didn't sell. So, yeah, in that sense, I understand what it's like to be a younger artist, because I still feel as though I'm in exactly the same position. I haven't paid the fees for Goldsmiths, which is something to take care of, uh, which I won't be taking care of for a while because I haven't got the money, the possibilities to pay them. I, I cannot receive my mark until I've paid, meaning I won't be graduating. I, I will pay them, I just can't. No way I can afford it right now. That's out of any possibility. Like I, need, um, I need money for my studio. I really miss uh, the, the physical action of making work with, my, with plaster and with all sorts of material that I use. And at the moment, this isn't the right situation. Like, I can try and force it, and I have, but it's, it's just, uh, I can't, there's no way I can make any sculptures in my room. Three months after the degree show, not a great deal is happening. Few have even got a place to work. Packed my studio up entirely, so now the contents of my studio are divided between a warehouse and my living room, uh, which is a bit tight and a little uncomfortable because it means I don't have a, a workspace at all. Yeah, this is, this is the, the, the last piece of work that I've, I made um, before I moved out of my studio. It's made out of a basketball, obviously, and um, there are two um, kind of uh, swordfish snouts. Many times I have lots of objects which I collect, and I'll have them in the studio, and you, sometimes you, you don't know why you have the objects or why you're still hanging on to them. Um, but then there comes a moment when you realize that a, a basketball should collide with two um, swordfish snouts. And that's basically the piece. It actually wasn't, it wasn't easy to do, but it is that simple. And, and I quite like the simplicity of the, the materials. It just really works for me. And so I don't, uh, I knew when I made it that I was happy with it and that was it. And then you just move on to another piece. Roisin's not produced anything new since the show. A wobbly start for her art career. After the show, there was on a big high for a while, and then a massive, massive dip. Because there was three months of like doing, 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 getting ready, thinking up ideas. And then there's kind of nothing, you know. I guess it's always hard leaving. I miss my friends and college and my teachers. Um, so that's, you know, different. My grades were fabulous. <laughs> so at least I know that Goldsmiths understood what I was doing, um, which is kind of important, important for me. Um, and, um, and now I have no work. I found um, that having a child has really made me take what I do an awful lot more seriously because um, my kind of family depends on, on it being not like some kind of folly but as something that I can actually <laughs> keep us afloat with. With galleries all over town showing emerging talent, for those who aren't busy, it's a chance to size up the competition and be seen on the scene. There's a lot of people in the art world who um, do well because they have connections. 
And another group of people do very well because they're very, very good at hustling. That doesn't mean that the work's more interesting or any better in any way whatsoever. It just means that those people really, really want it. They really want success. And it does seem that the people who are really, really want it are the people who tend to get it. So hustling is a big, um, big thing. I usually think that want what the kind of gallerists don't want is an artist who kind of toots their own horn. You can't just rush in on people and tell them how incredible you are. And, oh, I just went to Goldsmiths and my degree show was this. And let me tell you about me. Oh, uh, just email? I get it. Maybe I'm a bit rubbish at networking, but uh, I can't really um, approach people. If in conversation you're asked what you do and what kind of work you do, then they've opened the door and then you can discuss your work. Um, but otherwise it's a bit like cold calling, like you wouldn't just call up a gallery and say, hey, I want to show you some work. You know, they, 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 they're not interested. They, they literally bin DVDs, portfolios, anything you send and they just bin that stuff. And so here it's only slightly better, but uh, the, the problem is, is that if you offend them, then they can put a name to the face. <laughs> that it is very popular to sell a lot of air, but I don't want to do that. But I think that because there is so much of it and there is so much emphasis in this, uh, in socializing and in, in networking in such a manner, it's, uh, I don't know, I think there's, uh, <laughs> where does the work go? I mean, that's the question. Where, where is the work? Where, where is, uh, where is uh, the important stuff? Like, and there is a high risk of actually losing the point of what you're doing and end up having an amazing social life and no work. It's just not for me. I'm not going to uh, sacrifice a very precious time of thinking about stuff that for me it's interesting to go out and meet people. No. <laughs> Five months into professional life, only two of the 40 graduates are with galleries. The myth about being discovered in your studio, like the artist in his or her garret, waiting for someone to come along and discover them, is a myth. And the only way that artists are successful is if their work is seen. Some of the graduates are learning the only way to do it is to do it for themselves. Here, an old shop becomes a temporary exhibition space. As an artist, luck is involved in it, but you have to be really proactive, really motivated to kind of, you know, put yourself in the position where you're meeting the right people, saying the right things, you know, getting your work shown. Basically, it's just, I think, getting yourself out there and, you know, not sort of sitting idle. And that's the thing that we really wanted to do with this shop is, rather than wait for curators to come to you, which of course they do come to some people who are lucky, um, we thought, no, we're going to do this for ourselves and, you know, this is our shop and we're going to have our own exhibition. Blue and Roisin are among the artists invited to exhibit. They asked me to put this piece of work into the show and that's totally fine, delighted, whatever. Um, I went in to collect it from Goldsmiths yesterday. It's a neon light. It cost me 600 quid and the goddamn thing is is in the bin, they dumped it, it's gone. So I have no work for the show, and so... <laughs> um, so I'm thinking insurance claim. That might work. What would you do? Well, it cost me 600 quid. Um, the plan at the moment is um, I'll insure myself, or I'll insure the artwork uh, for here, this you know, uh, under this address or something like that. Then put a claim in because maybe it got nicked from, you know, outside the door there and try and get my money back. Something like that. And anyway, you see, the whole kind of joke is on the, <laughs> on the neon was uh, written, work will set you free. 
Um, so it's all about this idea of work and not work and, you know, actually scamming and scheming and finding other possibilities.